Hello, my name is Manuel Blechschmidt. In this video, I'm going to show how to use the REST interfaces of the area.health uh, area application. So first thing what you can do is if you go on localhost clone 8080 slash Q slash open API and you click enter, you can download a YAML encoded uh, open API specification. You can get one in JSON as well. But uh, for this example, I'm uh, going to use uh, YAML. Um, and what you can do is you can go to editor.swagger.io, paste this YAML here, and Swagger will show you a nice visualization of all the uh, REST interfaces that we are offering. Um, I would just briefly uh, give you some, uh, or explain what, what all these functions are doing. Config is you can uh, send us a configuration and we will save this. So this also contains uh, the connector um, configuration. Uh, this will end up in a file called user properties document bundles so this will create the printout so you send certain uh, different bundles and then you create a printout ippq um, this is our uh, um, internet printer protocol uh, endpoint where you can add this as a printer and then you can print musta 16 forms and we will um, convert them to, to uh, normal uh, e-prescription bundles kbv transform this is the xslt script to create the um, original file that you have to show to the doctor while signing. Uh, validate, it's the Harpy Fire validator that um, can be used uh, for validating a fire bundle. Workflow abort, this is for deleting an e-prescription, so technically it's uh, calling the dollar abort method on the Fachdienst. Batch sign, here you can sign multiple uh, bundles in one batch. You can use XML or JSON, both will work. Workflow cards, so this gives you uh, all the available cards um, in the system. So I think I can just call this without any input. So let's just try this. Let's just go here, workflow cards. Yeah. And, and these are the example cards from Titus. So if you just go to localhost 8080 workflow slash cards, then you can just see them here in the browser. And then there is a workflow comfort signature activate, workflow comfort signature deactivate, so you can activate and deactivate the comfort signature, a workflow comfort signature user ID, so this will give you the current user ID of the comfort signature. Uh, for these four um, functions, um, we, are, we are currently in the process of developing a, a security concept for that. So you can you should only use these four functions if you have a trusted network. So if you know that everybody's in the network are uh, only trusted parties, um, and if if not, then you should deactivate this functionality. And and this is likely how we are going to handle this. So th that we will build in a switch where we say um, uh, disable easy comfort signature, where you can basically disable uh, the usage of this functionality in a normal network. And if you disable it, it will just mean we won't remember the user ID. So then you always have to remember the user ID and you always have to pass us the user ID. Workflow sign, this is for signing a single bundle. Workflow task, this is for creating a task on the Fachdienst. Workflow update, this is for updating the um, the uh, um, uh, so, so update. What you do with update is you post the signed bundle to uh, the Fachdienst and then afterwards uh, the e-prescription is really uh, enabled for uh, redemption in a pharmacy. Uh, and this is what this function is doing. And XML prescription, um, there you can post a certain version of XML prescription and it will be distributed to all the clients in the network. And normally you don't need this, but it's it's still there. Uh, we, we've used it for, for testing. Oh. Uh, then here are some schemas. Um, Often we just use strings, so uh, but but we provide examples for nearly all of these um, all of these REST uh, interfaces, and I will show you some. So let's start with um, our JavaScript samples. So here, if you go into the JavaScript folder, you will find one, two, three, four, five, five samples where we use JavaScript code um, to call our system. And this JavaScript is, uh, code is it's mainly, if you, for example, use uh, the next gen uh, uh, communication server, then uh, these samples can be directly used uh, with next gen connect. So this was before it was called immerse connect. Uh, but you can also use, um, uh, for example, a normal NAS or Rhino engine uh, to execute it. And I will just run it. So we created a test case. It's called JavaScript test. And there, I have to, uh, I have to enable it. And there, there is, for example, um, a test create e-prescription. And if you run this one, 
it will uh, show you everything what's happening on the console because full uh, logging is enabled and you will see uh, what the system sends and what it receives. So here this, this was the bundle that was posted and if, ev and if everything worked then I should get um, the printout here. So here's the printout um, and just to give you a step-by-step -step, uh, explanation what, what's what's happening. So um, first um, a, a task is created on the Fachdienst and from this task we need the task ID and the access code. Uh, and, and, and the task ID is typically also called a prescription ID. So um, uh, yeah, I, th I think on 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 IB, on on um, uh, Titus they are the same, the prescription ID and the task ID. And I think on uh, IBM Fachdienst they are different. So uh, I, I don't know if they already changed this in in, in t Titus, but just uh, keep in mind that the task ID and the prescription ID uh, might be different values. Um, then what we do is um, reread uh, the uh, bundle JSON, so uh, normal JSON. Then we uh, um, sign this bundle, and then we call the update function with a signed uh, bundle. Uh, then we create the PDF, and then in the end we also delete the e-prescription again from from the Fachdienst. And this is the whole uh, whole flow how it works. We also have a curl example that uses um, XML data for for a uh, for for demo. Um, so let me just execute this curl script. So source main bash. Uh, let's go here. So UEP uh, git. I will also make this a little bit bigger. P uh, then source main bash and then there's the curl example rest and if I uh, I have to remove the target folder and now I can just run the uh, whole curl example and uh, yeah so the curl example just uh, talked to our eRPS app server uh, and, and, and created uh, prescriptions uh, uh, yeah, just using command line tools via the REST API. And if you, if I now go here in the target folder and open this, then this is everything what was created. So I, I uh, see the first op the operation outcomes. We can look into these outcomes. So this is what we receive from the Fachdienst and we just hand it over to the client. Um, and then uh, we generate uh, the validation um, um, uh, transformed uh, HTML files uh, that you have to show to the uh, to the doctor while signing. Um, then here uh, there is a signed e-prescription data. Uh, this is just um, uh, a two-line file with base64 encoded signed data, and and this is this is uh, CMS uh, and, and encoded data. So it's CMS stands for cryptographic message syntax. And this is also, th there, there are two other names that you should remember. There, there's one format and it's, it's qu quite the same or uh, it's the same uh, alias. It's called PK PKCS7. And then there is also a, a coding, it's called ASN1. And uh, this stuff here is all of this. So it's, it's a CMS data, it's a PKC, a PKCS7 data and it's also ASN1 encoded. And there are different tools with OpenSSL uh, to view this. Uh, I might create a bonus video for that, uh, how you can uh, look into this data. And then in the end we could create the printout. So this is how the printout looks like. And also on this printout you have two uh, bundles. So there's also an example how, how you handle two bundles. Yeah, then uh, thanks a lot and see you in the next video.